Hey guys, um, back out here again today on the bus. Um, this is what it's gonna look like actually when I get done with it. I'm really excited about that. We use it for parades and stuff for uh, my company here locally. Uh, and then also it's gonna be my camping vehicle. But um, one of the things I need to do on this thing is to get the headliner out. I was gonna try to actually paint it with vinyl paint and stuff, but the more I think about it, it's pretty roached and so it's gotta go. When you get inside, the back part's not too bad. There's a couple little holes that could be patched, you know, but when you get up front here, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible. So going to, uh, grab myself a um, razor blade and I'm going to cut this bad boy out. All right, guys, well, that wasn't too bad. Now I'm just gonna clean up this mess inside and um, get it all bagged up. I think that insulation I might save just in case I put another cloth headliner, but I think I'm gonna put wood. All right, guys, ceiling is scraped. Now I just need to get it vacuumed up in here. But man, that'll wear you out. Yeah, if anybody ever invites you over to the house and say, hey man, we're gonna pull out a headliner and scrape the glue off the ceiling. Man, just give them a kind uh, nod and say, man, I, I just can't make it today. All right, guys, it's all been vacuumed out now. The ceiling is scraped. Uh, cold beer, gotta have a cold beer, hot days. And um, now I'm gonna take a wet rag and wipe the whole inside of it down and then look and see if there's anywhere else I need to spray with the, um, the stuff to neutralize the rust. Let that dry. And then I think I'm going to use that um, red, red oxide um, uh, paint to prevent rust. It just do the whole damn inside with a brush because uh, it's going to be underneath the flooring, behind the door panels, and under the bed. And so once that dries, uh, then, then I'll be ready to start getting it ready to uh, paint the parts that are going to show um, red. All right, guys, what I've been doing is sanding all the places that I think may show when I paint the red paint inside. I'm getting a lot of adhesive off of it. Uh, well, it's going to take a little while to get it as clean as I want it to be before I spray it, but I think all the areas that are going to show um, are going to have to be sanded, and the areas that aren't going to show I'm probably going to tape off and paint with the uh, red oxide, the, the red um, Rust-Oleum paint to prevent rusting on like a heavily corroded metals or something. They, I, I can't remember the detail on it, but I think that's what, it's, what I'm going to end up doing. Yeah, getting close. Hey guys, I'm back out at the bus again. Um, this time I, I went ahead and I did some epoxy work on the windowsill. I epoxied the holes that were at the bottom of the window and then I put the whole thing in primer where I can kind of see what the surface looks like because I want to clean that up because that's going to be painted and I want it to be shiny and smooth and so I'm going to have to um, spend some time around these window openings because the roof is going to be insulated and have wood on it and right below that it's going to be door panels so I just got to make sure that uh, the places that aren't um, that are not going to be uh, that are going to be showing have um, you know some I've etched them put some primer on them and that stuff when I get ready to spray this thing that it will uh, it'll look as nice as it can thinking really seriously about drilling off those um, headliner clips on the thing not really sure what to do about that but still going at it though I'm, I'm excited just just takes a little time just take a couple foot a night and just get out here and work it. Man, it's just waiting to get put back together.
Okay, guys, I'm kind of going at it. All of these areas that are going to be painted, I'm just kind of cleaning them up. I'm getting all the little imperfections out of them. And I started down here on um, this corner because it's pretty gnarly looking from my very first welds. So I'm just going to clean it all up and um, get it all um, primed up in here. It's going to clean up pretty good, though. It's just lots of, lots of crevices and stuff to sand and clean up and stuff. Make sure there's not a bunch of mess in here. All right, I'm slowly kind of getting in here, wire brushing everything, sanding it back and getting it primed. On the inside, here, let me come around to the other side. I went ahead and cut off the um, trim that holds the, uh, well, it's this, this thing right here um, that holds the headliner in since it's going to have a wooden headliner. I'm going to have to cut that one out, get it all grounded down. But um, yeah, it's starting to starting to get cleaned up in here. It's just I just got to go section by section until I've either you know etched it with um, sandpaper and primer, or you know scraped it, whatever I got to do to get it where I know that it'll take some paint. But everything's cleaning up. It just takes a long time, lots of crevices and stuff. Um, when you get into stuff like this, where that there's it's like flaky and junk, you just got to take wire wheels to it do it the best you can and then go back with hand sanding and then you can prime it up and get it ready for paint just takes a little bit all right cleaning up the steps all of this stuff here here and here i hand fabricated it all so it's not perfect so i'm just gonna dial it in and make it look nice Slowly getting this thing to take shape. I know it probably doesn't matter to most people, but I'm kind of hypersensitive about it since I made everything here and it doesn't look right to me. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make it as straight as possible. Yeah, that's what you do though. Sometimes when you're fabricating things, you don't have money to buy panels, you just do what you gotta do. But yeah, it's just I feel more of a sculptor at this point, just trying to get it to look right. Hey guys, I'm back on the bus again today, and as I'm prepping it, where the sliding door was, um, I had quite a bit of grease um, in that rail. It's old, it's kind of caked on and stuff. And so our good friends, um, Super Clean, have provided us with this degreaser. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it up in there, maybe take a couple scrub brushes and um, see how well it does. Um, it's worked really well in the past. Um, Super Clean has supported the channel in the past and still does today. And I definitely would appreciate if you guys were to reach out to Super Clean. Um, either by going to the Walmart store and buying you some to use on your products or just giving them a shout out with a hashtag to let them know that you were watching Rusty Dubs and you saw how well Super Clean worked. One thing that's nice about the product is it does spray really well. So if you need to get up in places that, uh, that you need to kind of get, like in this situation where I really just need this inside this rail, with the way that there's nozzles set up, you can get right where you want to be. All right, um, it's sprayed up on there. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and maybe take a wire brush to it and um, see how well this Super Clean does its job. It's really kind of hard to see, but there was 50 years of caked on grease in there. And now, um, just about got it all cleaned up. So I'm gonna do one more round of it. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that rail's probably been that clean um, since the, the 1970s. So once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the super clean and we're going to hit this bottom rail and clean it out. You see it's kind of grungy in there. You see that grease up in there? We'll see how clean we can get that. You can see all that in there. This is that bottom rail. That stuff that's built up in there is a lot of grease. I'm currently uh, scraping out and cleaning this rail all through here, removing all the grease. That way I don't have any fish eyes when I go to paint. Um, it messes up the paint. It's no fun. <laughs> All right, now we'll take like a wire brush. I'm using like a little bra uh, like it's a brass brush I'm in there. I'm just gonna scrub it all out. You just see that break, break down grease coming out of there. 
stuff really does the trick. Well, there you go, guys. Just about cut all that grease out of there for the last 40, 50 years. It's kind of hard to get. Now I've just got to get in there and kind of scrape some of the stuff loose and put some osfo on it uh, to neutralize that rust. And it looks as if, so I'll get my finger up in there, but that used to need, that needs, that right there, needs some seam seal on it down inside this rail. So after I get everything all cleaned up, I'll drop a line of seam seal down it, make sure the water gets in there and holds. And we'll move on to the, uh, the next deal. But I definitely think that if you're going to be cleaning out your rails on your side of your bus, the super clean will do it with a brass brush. Just got to be diligent, keep cleaning on it. Um, other things I've used it for, I have it in my parts cleaner. Um, I, I use it to, uh, man, I, I you clean everything with super clean. It's been great for me. And I do appreciate super clean for reaching out to me and let me share what your magic product will do. And uh, thanks again. All right, guys, while I'm waiting on the, uh, the putty to dry on the other side, I went ahead and um, jumped on to the opposite side to the biggest panel on the bus and started um, taking this, um, this board and doing this thing um, to try to get it as flat as possible. This is where I'm at. As you can see, it's, um, I, I don't have much further to go. Just these areas um, that are showing um, when I'm doing my, uh, my board sanding. I'm starting to see a few low spots jump up basically doing this i'll do the putty i'll sand it all off i'll shoot a primer i'll back it off again with the um with this um man, i can't remember what this thing is called but um anyway i'll uh oh it's an inline sander and uh, then i'm following it up with a straight edge just to verify you know kind of where things are on it as it goes across and then um, once that's done uh, then i'll uh i'll sand it again <laughs> until i feel like it's comfortable enough that i can shoot this panel and not see a bunch of weird you know imperfections got that uh stuff is ready to dry so we'll let that go and go to the other side of the bus all right guys i feel like that's uh i blocked it back again there's no more wavering in this thing i um hang on for a second that's as far as I'm going to take it right now. Um, next time that'll get touched, it'll be wet sanding. But I no longer have any spaces going down the panel, which was a big deal before. I mean, it was literally kicked up a quarter of an inch. So I feel good about that. Um, I, um, I now, I pretty much, I feel like that's as far as it needs to go. Other than the fact that I'm going to have to come back and clean up these edges. There's little little imperfections in the edges and down in that seam, that like that little right there. All that stuff has to be fixed before it goes into um, primer for four four paint. But uh, as far as the panel being straight, uh, I mean, it's a straight panel. Been working on blocking this back today. Uh, I feel like it's getting it's getting pretty straight. As I go across here, not seeing any waveries can't really feel anything in it now um, got some details around the edges to dial in but uh, this is like the biggest panel on the bus other than the roof and that's where I want to start on the big one and work my way down with the blocking and um, yeah it's coming along of course it's got a little round there but that's just how how the thing is um, built but yeah it's uh, been a challenge when I started here uh, there was like almost a quarter inch gap as far as it being off but um it's dead on right now i've been utilizing this uh this uh it's like a sanding block a long a long block and just hand doing it and then going back and addressing it again so pretty happy with that i went ahead and put some of that heavy rust uh, primer on it from rust oleum on the inside I mean, obviously this is where it's going to rust the most, or if it's going to. I got it down in these little sections down underneath the windows. That's why I had rust holes on the side of the bus. This has been completely rusted out. All of that's replaced because it was completely rusted out. This was where the spare tire was, and the spare tire hole was rusted out, and I had to make all of that. So I figure before I paint it, 
the floor level of the bus i want to put some extra protection on it um, i know a lot of people might want to use the um the poor 15 or something but i'm using the the poor boy rust-oleum and so this is what it's going to be all of this will be behind upholstery or under carpet or under the bed so you'll never see it well guys i'm getting closer and closer i've been sanding the uh the sides of the bus now uh, for about a week i'm down to uh 400 grit which is getting pretty close to ready to paint went and bought my moon suit today that way i can suit up when i get ready uh, tomorrow i'm gonna go get all my plastic for the um, for the booth i've been pretty much working on the driver's side of the bus um, and I'm, right now i'm working on one of the steps i'll show you i'm gonna go ahead and blend in the panels that i welded in um, so i'm just kind of slowly working them back um, eventually i'm probably gonna have rubber pads that go over these but i just didn't like the seams looked ugly on it so i just wanted to clean it up but um, the sides of the bus man i wish it, there's no way a camera can catch it but uh, they're like uh, you slide your hand down and it feels like glass right now and i got most everything out of the panels the only place i'm having any trouble with is right in here there's going to be a wave. I mean, I cannot seem to chase it out. I, I go back and forth, back and forth with it. Um, and it's, it's there though. See, it looks nice and flat. Um, but then when I get up here, there's a little bit of space under here and it's not horrible, but it's there. Kind of hard to tell there, but, um, you know, as it gets to the top, it's dead straight and flat up against it. And I can take this ruler down the whole bus and any place and it's dead flat we've been blocking it out forever even back in here i mean it's it's flat but that one little area I, i've 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 worked it and worked it and worked it and i just can't seem to get it just right I mean, it's hard to can't really show you where it is but yeah you can see a little space right there so it's just gonna have a wobble in it and i'm i'm, I'm almost to the point where like hey that's good enough you know because it's i've been working forever on it um, this isn't a show vehicle um uh, but it's gonna look pretty nice i think once i uh, get it all painted up uh, i'm just uh, taking my time uh, once i feel comfortable with this side of the car i'll go to the other of course the sliding doors off of it and the passenger door so there's just really a quarter panel to work i've already done the front and sanded it and, and it I, I think it's pretty much ready to go um, then i'll go around to the back knock it out and it'll be time to pull this bus out of here wash everything and then um mop the floors get the air hoses in here blow the ceilings off and i'm um, get ready to put my booth back up yeah i keep spraying it down spraying it down looking at it feeling it i've got two places on the side of the bus that i'm not happy with but i've redone them so many times i'm to the point well I don't know if I'm gonna get them any better than they are. So um, I think it's about time that I move to the other side of the bus. This time I'm, I'm sanding down to 400. Uh, I'm trying to get it as smooth as possible uh, when I put the paint on. Um, I went and ordered my paint today, ordered it from Napa. It was the least expensive place I could find, but the hardener, a gallon of paint, and um, two uh, quarts of reducer, it was nine hundred and ten dollars blew me away god paints expensive um so i hate this being not a professional painter uh, when i go to spray this especially in these close quarters that i have here i measured all the way around the bus and i have i'm gonna have 31 inches um for the whole diameter so hopefully that will allow me to um to spray the bus the best i can at least in this place i also went down and bought my plastic for my paint booth last time it was 38 dollars this time same box of stuff which is like two years later 85 dollars crazy yeah i know it probably doesn't matter to anybody it's going to be behind all the panels under the floor but for me uh i just know that floors are, are a big issue on volkswagen so i want some rust protection on it there we go nothing fancy just some rust preventing primer yeah this morning i'm kind of Got my pipes out from the last time that I made a paint booth, kind of laying them out on the floor, trying to figure out how I'm going to configure this. Uh, it's getting pretty close. Still waiting. Still waiting on the paint. Um, the paint came, um, the hardener came, but no reducer. Um, it's been three days, so I'm just kind of waiting. Sucks that we're all supposed to be shipping from the same place, but 
is what it is. Um, so right now I'm just kind of laying stuff out and probably going to try to get this paint booth up um, tonight and then kind of go back and do the finish up stuff on it. There's a couple little rough spots that I want to touch and stuff on it and just uh, just little stuff. Just, you know, those last minute things where you think, man, that'll make it that much better. But, you know, it's an amateur paint job at the house and the garage. It's going to be what it's going to be. Well, guys, it's happening. Starting to put the booth up. Uh, I'm excited. You can get all this stuff all the way around. And I still have stuff to do uh, to the bus and wet sand and all that stuff. So, But it's time to get the booth up and just keep cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and mopping and uh, blowing out the floors. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Super excited. Uh, the paint that I'm using is automotive finish. Um, it's a Martin Senior Paints. Um, this is the code on it. So, yeah, I'm pumped up. It's a Crossfire product from Napa, which is very affordable. So I've got all the proper hardeners and reducers and all that stuff for it. Got the old gun out. And now I'm just slowly taking my time. I'm not going to get a big hurry to do this. Just getting it all ready. All right, working on getting the booth up. Had to bring the booth way forward um, where I've got enough room to spray the front of the bus. Slowly, um, just getting it all in place. And then I got a bunch of wood I got to bring in, put around the base of it to keep it from flopping around. But yeah, little baby steps slowly becoming the paint booth. All right, guys, I've done the one uh, wet sanding with 400. Found a few places on here uh, that I want to do a little attention to. I'm not super concerned about the roof on this since buses are so tall, but um, I didn't want any like really blatant dents in it, you know. So I did a little hammer work on it earlier, and uh, these are just the places where that I think it could use a little bit of filler. I'll sand it out, and we should be pretty um, close to getting ready to, uh, to do a final sanding and tape this thing off and paint it. All right, guys, so I've got everything all taped off to paint the roof. Um, the roof is not perfect, um, but you know, where I'm standing, well, I mean, you can kind of see, the roof is way up there. I'm gonna have a rack up there and all kinds of stuff, so I'm really not that concerned with it being perfect. Uh, this is gonna be a, a used vehicle. It's not gonna be like a show car or anything, so I'm gonna go camping in this thing and use it for work. But um, yeah. Got it all done up. Just um, right now, I'm waiting. I have found one little spot that I need some spot putty on on the front edge because I figured the front edge would show. And so I'm letting that dry and then we'll sand it off there and uh, get to spraying some. I'm going with the Dupla color um, lacquer for the roof. Um, it was a whole lot less expensive than trying to buy more of the real automotive paint that's, you know, like $900 a gallon. I think I got it for like 35, 40 bucks. I figure if I need to repaint it, the roof in the future, I'll do it. But as of right now, this is going to have to do. Guys, here we go. That's the second coat. It's all wet. It is what it is. Got to let it dry for a couple days and get ready to tape off for Friday to do my um, do my actual um, painting of the body. But it took me a little bit to get kind of used to shooting again, but it's going to be all right. I might even just leave a little texture in it. It's actually kind of um, uniform, so who knows? Well guys, uh, that took two quarts of um, the Duracolor um, lacquer paint, or Duplicolor um, from O'Reilly's in the white. And I've done two cans of the clear on it. Um, you know, it's gonna have to be wet sanded and buffed, but I think I'm gonna do one more um, can of the um, clear coat on it first. But it's getting there. 
Well, it sprayed a lot more consistent this time. So I think that last, one more quart will do it where there'll be enough there that I could actually wet sand it smooth. Uh, so it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Still has a little texture to it, like a lot, but at least it's got some sheen to it now and it's not just rough. And uh, I think it'll clear, I think if, with wet sanding, it'll straighten out. All right, guys, I've done now uh, two coats of clear on this roof and I'm taking thousand it says use 1500 but i'm taking thousand and just cutting it back um i just don't think the 1500 was i don't know i don't have a a da with little pads on it so i'm having to do it by hand so thousand seems to be okay and i'm just gonna cut it back as much as i can and then do one final coat of um of the actual um the clear coat and then that's probably uh where it's going to stay for a month or so until I can get something with a DA or something and we'll take it back to 1500 on the roof and then buff it out. But yeah, I mean, all of the roughness is disappearing now slowly. I mean, you can kind of, kind of hard to see without the light. But uh, I mean, it's my first lacquer, so I don't know exactly how it's supposed to feel, but I'm feeling I'm getting most of the texture out of it now. So it's coming along. All right, guys, I have wet sanded it all once again. And it's not completely smooth, but in some places it's getting really close to being smooth. But um, I figure my last coat, a clear coat, I'm gonna put on it nice and wet. So we'll see um, tomorrow how that goes. And that will be the last coat because uh, I, I feel like I got enough clear on there now that I can buff it all the way smooth. But yeah, man, I'm telling you, doing that by hand is rough. <laughs> what's going on now I've got two coats of lacquer I did two coats of um, clear then wet sanded it to a thousand and then I did another coat of clear and it's it's got enough clear on it now that I feel comfortable that once this is cured and I'm gonna let this now go for a couple weeks uh, I'll be able to cut it back and buff it out fairly shiny uh, not too bad First time to ever spray lacquer, so it's a learning experience, but it's gonna be okay. I uh, can't wait to see it when it's all cut and really shiny. I had some places up front that you know, started getting a little sheen to them, but uh, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be pretty sweet. I'm excited to um, get, the, uh, get the red on here. It's coming along. You can see that. It's um, getting ready. I'm putting the plastic on the roof of the bus. So I'm gonna do that, mask it all the way around. Um, some of the stuff I've been doing that I haven't shown is I went and bought a, um, a DA. I don't know where the heck I put it, but it's an air DA. And um, it's this one right here from Harbor Freight. I should have bought this from the get-go. Holy cow. I was able to um, take and um, hit the whole bus with um, 800 um, grit in like 25 30 minutes where that previously that i had done it by hand for a day so yeah i learned my lesson on that it was only like 25 30 bucks so you you, you never stop learning but i'm going to now get all this taped down and then i've got to um, go through and um, just touch everything once again see how i feel about it and then um, i think i'm going to paint this other seat i had it in etching primer but not the same primer as the rest of the vehicle so i'm going to go ahead and um, Put it in primer that way i know that i'm going to have a reaction different from the rest of the surfaces and then i'm going to hit up around the bottom edges um you know you get old and fat like me you don't want to crawl all the way down on the ground but i'm going to have to get on the ground and kind of scoop myself around the vehicle to make sure there's no rough edges or anything that i've overlooked but that's where i'm at man um, we're getting really close to paint I'm limited on just one side of this garage because I have the rag top on the other side of the garage. And so I, um, I'm going to have to paint the bus and then I may have to transport it somewhere else to let it set while I pull in all the doors into this same space and hang them from the ceiling. And then, um, 
and, and paint those um, and then let them cure and then make arrangements to get the bus back to the house and have my friends come over and assemble all the doors and everything on it. And um, that's probably what's gonna happen. I'm super nervous because that I have one gallon of paint and I have enough reducer and, um, and hardener and everything to make it a gallon and a half. But I have to be really sure or really careful uh, that I don't over spray the bus and not have enough for the doors. Um, I know that on the roof, uh, when I painted the roof up here, that um, it took one quart um, to do the uh, the roof, um, one one coat, one full like wet coat on it. So, and then, you know, I did the clearance stuff, but I mean, so I know that I've gotta be really careful and strategic on how I spray the bus the inside to me is not as super critical um, as far as it being, you know, like like a show finish or something like that. I just wanted the color of the bus. That way, when you open the door, it looks the same on the inside. Um, so it's probably going to, I mean, I think red's going to cover pretty good. I'll see when I put it down the first time. I mean, initially, you got to put a really light, like a tack coat on it, wait a little bit, and then you come back and you spray like a, a little wetter coat. So... We'll see how it covers. I'm hoping that it covers for, um, you know, the whole thing, maybe a quart. That that would be the goal. I'm not, I, I'll show you what I'm painting here. I mean, it's, I'm not painting the whole inside, but it will be, when you look in there, it's gonna be all the stuff that's gray. So, um, you know, there's these sides, um, same on the other side, and then the, um, the actual seat bases up front. So I've just gotta make sure that I have enough to do the door jams and you know catch those spots. So I'm like one day out tomorrow, I'm gonna spray the door jams and the inside of the bus and stuff. And I had my 14 um, year old daughter come out because you know she's got young eyes and stuff and had her take a look to see if she could see any imperfections in the bus. And uh, man, she found some imperfections. You know, the front of these things take a lot of damage over the gears with little rock chips and stuff, but she found little holes, little spots in the in the primer that weren't right. And um, so I was really grateful for that, but now I got to sand it all. <laughs> she just very few though. I mean, and I told her, I mean, we're talking about surfaces that are gonna be painted that are gonna be the shiny part, you know? We just wanted to make sure that we, uh, we hit everything uh, that, you know, may have like a little chip in it or something. And so it's not a ton, but it is enough that's gonna keep me busy uh, for the afternoon tomorrow. And uh, I was really shocked though, because when I got down on my hands and knees, I really started looking at what she was looking at on the front of the bus. I'm glad that I had her take a look. As I'm getting closer and I've wet sanded the, the whole bus, like the bottom edges of these fenders were just a little, I mean, they're gonna be beat up a little bit just cause of road rash and stuff, but I just want to get them a little bit cleaner uh, while I got a chance to. So kind of getting that in. But guys, um, I'm about to button this up and then I'm gonna wash the bus, start painting it. Boys, it's about to go down. Hope I don't spill any of this. I wish they had a better way to get it out of the can. It's looking like a murder scene around here, man. It's like Dexter kind of stuff with all the plastic and yeah, spilt paint everywhere. Let's check out, I got the first coat on. All right, it's looking pretty good. This is the tack coat, they call it. Um, I've got to spray the whole thing again. Um, in just a little bit when it gets where it's, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? You can touch it basically, but it's looking pretty good. The boys, it's going down. The first coat is on. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Got some places where I had a reaction on the paint up under the dash. I ain't worried about it. Hell, I'll just spray paint it black if I need to. Got the insides where I want to paint paint it. All this stuff. Um, just man. Uh, I, I'm pretty pleased. Um, I can't wait to put the next coat on. I'm gonna put it on nice and wet and um, see how it uh, how it looks. 
but we're getting a red bus. Got some runs right there. Holy shit, guys. It's killer. <laughs>